story, well, we'll find out what it's called at the end. A long, long, long time ago, they say there were anywhere from 50 to 70 million buffalo on the prairie. Now, our people, they lived in teepees. Now, there was a Kokum, and remember Kokum, that's the Cree word for grandmother. There was this Kokum. And this Kokum, there was something that she just loved very, very much. She loved going to powwows. She just loved it. It was a time for meeting with friends and family, lots of food and singing and dancing and storytelling. It was a wonderful time. Now one day her daughter came and she said, Mom, can you look after your grandson? My husband and I, we have a lot to do today. Could you take care of him? Oh, of course, I'll love him, I'll look after him. And so off went her daughter. And then she realized, wait a minute, I'm going to the powwow. How, how am I gonna carry my bannock and buffalo meat and my grandson to the powwow? Because we have to remember, there were no cars or horses or anything in those days. If you went somewhere, you had to walk. So how, how am I gonna do that? My grandson, you know, my buffalo meat and bannock, what am I gonna do? And then she had an idea. She went for a walk in the forest, okay? Now, we have to be really careful, okay, because we don't want to go for a walk and get lost. But this Kokum, she knew all the trails. She knew where to go. So she went for a walk in the forest. While she was walking, she saw some rabbits. She walked a little further, and she saw that little rascally raccoon. They had the cutest little paws. Then she walked a little further and then she saw some bears. There was a mama bear and her baby bear. Do you know, do you think that it would be a good idea? How, what if you saw a baby bear all by itself? Little tiny baby bear. Would you pick it up? Oh no, we would never pick it up because mommy's not too far away looking for food and she would come and she would just come because she could smell you before she sees you. And remember, she's got long claws and sharp teeth. And you know what? That little baby bear, he's got really long claws too. So she finally came to the water. And there at the water, there were cattails growing and moss on the logs. I think most of you have seen cattails when you're driving down the highway and you see cattails growing. And then here, there's moss growing on rocks and in here is some cattails and it's really fluffy, but if I open it up, we might, I might sneeze. So she took the cattails and she took the moss that she gathered and went back to her teepee. And there she opened up the cattail and she took all the little sticks and stones out of the moss and mixed it all together. Then she made a bag. She made this beautiful bag. And then she put that mixture inside the bag like that, put that mixture in there. And then she put her grandson in there and tied it all up. Now, she tied that all up. But wait a minute. How am I still going to carry my grandson and my buffalo meat and bannock to the powwow? How am I going to do that? Now, she thought about it because she was a really, really smart cook, I remember. And she went back out into the forest and she found a nice piece of wood. And she brought it back and she cleaned it all off and everything, made some holes in the wood. We knew how to make holes in those days too. It was a very, very unique way. Made some holes in the wood, put that bag and the baby on there and tied it up. And now she put it on her back and now she could carry her buffalo meat and her bannock and her grandson on her back and off she went to the powwow. Now, you know, I ask, why, why did she do it? Why did she put that moss and, and the cattails in that bag? 
Why do you think she did it? Huh. Let's just think about it for a moment. Now, you have to remember back in those days, the baby, remember that little baby up here? He didn't have any clothes. We had no stores. And so the little baby went into that bag with no clothes on. Uh-oh. But what about if the baby went to the bathroom? What are you going to do? Because there was no such thing as diapers in those days. And so what that did, the moss and the cattails, it would soak up when the baby went to the bathroom, and then the mom could just change it and throw all that stuff away out into the bushes, and there would be no pollution. Now, moss bags, so this, and it's called a moss bag, okay? Because of that stuff that went inside, moss is really good. It soaks up lots of stuff. And that sphagnum moss is really good. And this is my baby here. This is my version of my baby. And the mothers, they decorated their moss bags really nice. And the baby went in there with no clothes because we had no material back then. And then they could just put this, it could maybe go around your forehead and carry your baby just like that. Uh, you know. I think we could have almost made this, put another one and made it like a backpack. And then sometimes when mom was really, really busy, why, she could just hang that up off a branch and with our winds, it would just rock the baby back and forth, back and forth. And it would keep the baby safe from the animals. And that's what they call the moss bag. <laughs>